So let's say that you guys have some amazing dehydrated fruits just like these right here. But the problem is you guys don't have the genetics. You guys can't get spores. You guys can't get a spore swab from the dehydrated fruits, but you really want to have these in your genetic library. What do you do? So lucky for all of us, you don't need to have spores to hijack those genetics. I'm gonna show you guys how to reanimate the mycelium so that way you guys have the genetics in your library even though you guys can't get the spores or an LC or a swab or anything like that. Just with the dehydrated fruits, you guys could bring them back to life and then you guys could have them in your spore library, in your genetic library for you to grow over and over and over. This is gonna be a really good video. This was requested by you guys. Let's go. Dripping on acid in the hotel lobby. Everything moving hella fast, Ricky Bobby. Floating in the ethers. Listen to the ethers, you can probably tell the future. Superhuman man. What's going on, Trip Team? First of all, I wanna welcome you guys back to a brand new video. As always, if this is your first time here, if you're not subscribed, but you really enjoy this content, you really enjoyed this video, you was able to learn something, then just go down below, hit the subscribe button and the bell off to the side, so that way you guys know when I drop a new video. As always, the social media is right there. Now, if you guys want really in-depth, step-by-step text, when, when I say text, I mean like grow videos, extraction videos, things like that, Go to my Patreon. We have a private library that is not censored at all. It's 100% uncensored, and you guys are gonna get some amazing videos. There's over 100 videos in that private library. Just the private library alone is amazing, but we also have a private chat room. We have a private Reddit. We have all types of amazing stuff. We actually have bi-monthly Zoom meetings. So twice a month, we all meet up on Zoom. We answer each other's questions. We link up, we meet, we have good conversation. So it's absolutely amazing. If you guys wanna learn how to do this step-by-step, step, whether it's extractions or cultivation or anything like that, then go over to my Patreon because that's the spot to be. There'll be a pinned comment in the comments below with links to everything. So if you guys just wanna click the link and it will take you over there, then feel free to do that. Regardless, I just wanna tell you guys, thank you for watching my content. Thank you for all the support, whether you subscribe or jump over to the Patreon or whatever, it really does not matter. I just appreciate you guys for coming over here and watching my videos, so thank you so much. Now, if you guys wanna get one of these amazing hoodies right here, these are brand new, these are the Lucy hoodies, and these are to support a cause. So recently, one of our Trip Team family brothers, one of our really good brothers, found himself in a really crappy legal situation where his kids were taken away from him and he was actually put away. And he's fighting it, but he needs the best lawyers available to be able to get his kids home and to be able to beat this case. So what we're doing is we're doing this fundraiser. We created these hoodies right here. So obviously it's a Wheaties box, but it says Lucy's and it says a whole bunch of really cool stuff on it. And then on the back, it got this. It's a really dope hoodie and it's limited to 200. So if you wanna get one and you wanna support somebody at the same exact time that's fighting the good fight, then go pick up one of these hoodies. They're gonna go really, really fast. So make sure you guys get your hands on one. It's just a great protest. It's a great way to help out one of our brothers and also get something in return. So I wanna thank every single one of you guys that picked up one of these hoodies. Tag me on Instagram, show me you wearing the hoodie, show me the hoodie, whatever the case may be, and I'll give you a follow back. And I wanna thank every single one of you guys because without your help, we're not sure how this will turn out for our brother. So it's on us to back him up and make sure that things work out. Now, with that said, let's jump into this video because that's what you guys are here for, right? You guys are here to see how do we bring back dehydrated mushrooms and make them live again so we could save those genetics. Well, it's super easy. So let me explain why you would need this in the first place. Let's say you go out to Whole Foods or Trader Joe's and you buy some dehydrated mushrooms. Regardless of what type of mushroom they are, they're dehydrated. So they will put into a dehydrator or dehydrated somehow. How do you bring back those genetics? How do you bring them back to life? Well, it's really, really simple. All we need to do is rehydrate the mycelium and then put it to agar. And the chances of it regrowing or becoming viable again is very, very high if they were dehydrated within a certain amount of time. 
So if they were dehydrated within three to six months, you're gonna have a lot higher success rate than something that was dehydrated a year or two years ago. But we play the numbers game. The more plates we make, the higher chance we have that one of those plates will reanimate and we can get that mycelium growing again. So we're gonna play the numbers game. Now, over the past year, I've been testing out different ways of doing this. And really at the end of the day, the best way is the simplest way. So I'm gonna show you guys how I do that, but in order for me to do that, let's jump in front of the flow hood and I'm gonna show you guys how we get it done. All right guys, so here we are in front of the flow hood. I have everything we're gonna need right now. So I have the sample fruits that I wanna reanimate. So these fruits right here, these dehydrated fruits, were purchased from Whole Foods. I'm not really sure what type of mushrooms they are. Um, they're just dehydrated mushrooms that you could pick up at Whole Foods. But just remember, you guys could do this with any mushroom that's dehydrated. We're gonna reanimate it. Now, a big thing really comes down to how old the mushrooms are. How long ago were they dehydrated? And also how they were dehydrated. Now, if they were dehydrated using air and no heat at all, then what's gonna happen is you're gonna have a much higher success rate because the mycelium's gonna stay much more viable. Now, if they were dehydrated using really low heat, you're also gonna have a high success rate. Now, if somebody dehydrated them by using really high temperatures, you know, over 150 degrees Fahrenheit for a long period of time, it's gonna make it a lot more difficult for this mycelium to come back to life. Now, if it's a spore producing mushroom, you know, a mushroom that will drop spores very easily, then you guys could just take the dehydrated fruit and you guys could swab the gills. But since these mushrooms right here do not drop spores, we're gonna try and reanimate the mycelium. So we're pretty much gonna take a tissue sample from this mushroom. But before we actually put it to agar, there's a couple things we need to do. Number one, for a higher success rate, we need to rehydrate these mushrooms. So what we need to do right now is we need to actually put them into water and let them sit for at least 24 hours. And then after that, we could actually put it to agar. So let me show you guys the proper way to do this. I've tested it many different ways, and this is the way that's gonna have the highest chance of success. The first thing you need to do is obviously have your mushrooms. So we have our dehydrated mushrooms right here. These are nice and dehydrated. As you guys can see, listen, you guys will hear the crack. Look at that, nice and dehydrated. So what we need to actually do is we need to actually break up these mushrooms. So we're actually gonna cut them up into smaller, more manageable pieces that we can actually transfer to agar. We're not gonna leave them whole. Now for this, you don't need many dehydrated mushrooms, just one fruit will work. So we're gonna do these fruits right here. So I'm actually just gonna put them fruits off to the side and we're just gonna use this one fruit right here. The first thing, you guys wanna be wearing gloves, you guys wanna wipe down your equipment with isopropyl, and you guys need some sterile water. So for this, I have this test tube right here, and this test tube has sterile water, and it also has a cap or a lid. Now, if you guys don't have a test tube, don't worry, you guys could do this with a glass cup, a mason jar, you know, a measuring cup, it really doesn't matter. We're just gonna try to keep it a little bit more professional for the video. But if you guys had to use something else, that's perfectly fine. Now, do you guys need to use sterile water? Not necessarily, but it is a good idea to use sterile water because when we go to agar, there is a chance that we might get some contamination on our dishes. But what we're really looking for is to get at least some sections of transferable mycelium that's healthy. That's really what we're looking for. We're not looking for a perfect clean dish first time around. We just need some healthy mycelium that we could actually transfer to a new dish and then eventually get a nice clean dish. Now, this is an unsterile process. Even though we're using gloves, we wiped everything down with isopropyl, we're in front of the flow hood, we're using sterile water. This is an unsterile process. Now, it's unsterile because these mushrooms we're fruited, right? Mushrooms are fruited in unsterile conditions. They're not fruited in super sterile conditions. Another thing is they were dehydrated and then put into a bag. And that bag is not sterile. The dehydration process is not sterile. So there can be some other types of contamination on this fruit body. There's really no way to tell. There could be things like mold spores and hopefully not bacteria, but there could even be bacteria. Um, you know, 
not dangerous molds, molds like trichoderma and things like that, but there could be molds. So if you guys do get mold on your initial agar plate, it's perfectly fine. What we're looking for is just to get some clean cuts that we could transfer to a new agar plate. Maybe this is a good time to use some antibiotic agar when doing this process. Now I have a video showing you guys how to make antibiotic agar, but there's also a lot of vendors that sell pre-poured dishes of antibiotic agar. This might also increase your chances of success. But I'm just gonna show you guys the way that I've been doing it, that's been working out really well, so that way you guys could take the same exact thing I'm doing here and you guys could use it. The first thing you wanna do is you wanna take a knife or some type of clean metal scissors that have been wiped down with isopropyl and you guys wanna start to cut up your donor fruit. Look, I could even break it up with my finger. I actually don't even need to use these. So I'm just gonna break this up into manageable pieces. Now you guys don't want them too big, too small. You guys just want them manageable. Now, if you guys wanted to powder it up and make something more of like a slurry that you could use an inoculation loop, that's perfectly fine, but we're not gonna be doing that. So then what we're gonna do is we're gonna open up our sterile water. I'm just gonna put that right there. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna start to drop some of these pieces into our sterile water. Now remember, if you guys have too much material, you guys could always do a second tube or a second cup. It really doesn't matter. Once you guys have it filled up a decent amount, now you guys wanna replace the cap or the cover and you guys just wanna give it a good shake just to make sure all that material gets into the water. We want all this being completely submerged so that everything could get rehydrated. So this is what it looks like right here. We want everything to get hydrated. Now you'll notice the mushroom will absorb a lot of this water, but that's what we want. We want it to rehydrate because that's gonna help reanimate the mycelium. Now, once you guys have your mushroom material inside the sterile water, just place it there. And now we're gonna come back in about 12 to 24 hours and we're actually gonna put it onto our agar. It will be fully hydrated by then and it will do really well on agar. Like I said, it really comes down to how long ago the mushrooms were dehydrated. The more recently that they were dehydrated, the higher success you're gonna have. Now, if these mushrooms were dehydrated, you know, eight, nine, 10, 12 months ago, then, you know, obviously there's a lot less chance of them, you know, re-sparking growth and for the mycelium coming back to life. Now, since we got these from Whole Foods, right? Um, we don't know when they were actually dehydrated. So we're just using them as an example. Hopefully we'll get some growth out of them, but we're not 100% sure. And that's kind of the risk you take with this. Now this is a cool little hack that will come in handy when you guys can't get certain genetics, but you could get the fruits and it's a type of mushroom that doesn't drop spores or there is no spores or it's really tough to get any spores from it you guys could just take that fruit and try to reanimate it so that way you guys have the genetics. So let's let this sit, we'll come back tomorrow and then we'll actually put it to agar. All right guys, so it's been about 24 hours since we actually put our mushroom tissue into the sterile water and now it's all set. As you guys can see, it turned pretty dark but that's completely normal. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna pull out some of this mushroom tissue now and we're actually gonna put it to this agar. So I have some agar plates right here. These aren't antibiotic agar. This is just regular light malt extract agar. And I also have a sterile scalpel. Now, if you guys wanna use tweezers or something like that instead of a scalpel, you could, but I usually use a scalpel. I'll just go in there with the scalpel, pull out some tissue, and we'll put it to the agar. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pull my sterile scalpel out right now. Even though it's sterile, I'm still gonna flame sterilize. Like I said, this is an unsterile process. We're gonna try to keep it as clean as possible, but when you're using fruits that were dehydrated and fruited out in unsterile conditions, it's very hard to keep a process sterile. So we just try to do the best job that we could do as far as keeping things sterile. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pull this out now and I'm gonna flame sterilize it and we're gonna stop making some transfers. So I just flame sterilized and you don't need to wait for it to cool because it's gonna go into the water and to the mushroom mix so it will cool almost instantly. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna remove our cap from our tube and we're gonna go in there and we're gonna grab some of this tissue, just like that. 
And now we're gonna go over and we're gonna place it on our agar, just like that. And we're gonna do that to a few of these dishes. Now you don't need a flame sterilized every time you go back in there, but if you guys want to, you can. Here we go, we have some more tissue. And now we're gonna put it right to our agar. Just like that right there. So it look, should look just like this. There you go. I'll do one more transfer for you guys. Take a little bit of tissue. Put it right onto the agar just like that. Now I'm going to finish up the rest of these plates, but you guys got the gist of it and I'll catch up with you guys in two seconds. And there you go, guys. It's as simple as that. Now, a few different things I've played around with over the year that I've been testing out different ways to do this. I've tested out putting some light malt extract into the sterile water and letting the mushrooms soak in the water and light malt extract. That has helped bring back some older dehydrated mushrooms so that they could become viable. Another thing I did was put carbon into the water. So the carbon also helps spark growth. So if you guys are dealing with some older mushrooms that were dehydrated longer than six months ago, or you're not really sure if they were dehydrated one month ago or 12 months ago, then maybe that's the best path for you guys to go. So typically, if we're gonna put light malt extract into our sterile water, we only want it to be about one to 4% of the water that we're actually using. So typically, if you guys are using a test tube and you're just using a little bit of water, just a small pinch of light malt extract is gonna be more than enough to help boost the nutrients so that mycelium could come back to life on that agar. Another thing I played around with is carbon. So as you guys know, we do carbon agar, that's the black agar. That could help re-spark growth on older spores and things like that. It also works for older mushrooms that were dehydrated a long time ago. So if you guys wanna add a little bit of carbon to your sterile water, that could also help out. And like I told you guys, if you're having trouble getting bacteria under control, because like I said, this isn't a sterile process. These mushrooms were dehydrated in dehydrators or in open air. They were, they were fruited in open conditions. So at the end of the day, if you guys want to use an antibiotic agar, that's perfectly fine. You guys could do that. To be honest with you guys, if you was ever going to use antibiotic agar, now's probably the time to use it. But first, see if it will grow out easily and you can get a clean transfer just from some light malt extract. If you guys have a hard time fighting bacteria and things like that, then consider jumping into some antibiotic agar. This is just a cool little trick, a cool little hack that you guys could use. You know, you, sometimes you'll, you'll find these amazing fruits, but you can't find the genetics anywhere, but you could find the fruits themselves. Well, now you could actually reanimate it and get those genetics into your library just by doing this. It's a cool trick, a cool hack that you guys could keep with you just in case you ever run into that issue. I've been getting a lot of messages about this lately. What is the best way to do it? Can I do it? So yes, you can do it. I've been doing it for over a year. I've had a ton of success and I'm sure you guys will have success too. Now, like I said, we play the numbers game. So don't just do one plate and expect it to work out. If you're gonna do one plate, do 20 plates. At least if you do 20 plates, you might get two or three plates that actually spark growth and the rest of them won't. So you have to play the numbers game. We're just looking for one plate that sparks growth where we can get a healthy cut that we can transfer to a new plate. You know, this is extremely unorthodox. You know, in mycology, they don't really do this. This is just something that we've had to develop because of the situation we find ourselves in sometimes. Like I said, you can find the fruits, but you can't find an LC or a spore print or a fresh mushroom. So you might need to go with dehydrated mushrooms and sometimes this just works best. Now I've done videos on, can you use the spores that are in the bags? Like when you guys grab some mushrooms, can you use the spores that are in the bags? You can, but not all mushrooms produce or drop spores. You know, there's a lot of mushrooms like Enigma and some PEs and things like that, that just don't drop spores. So you guys have to deal with tissue samples. And what's the best way to get those genetics in your library if you can't get an LC? 
Take some dehydrated fruits, bring them back to life on agar, and then you guys got the genetics. It's just a cool hack that you guys could use. So hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. I love doing videos like this. If you guys want even more, you guys want more in-depth, uncensored stuff, like I said, Patreon is the place to be. I want to thank every single one of you guys that support me over there and everybody that supports me here on YouTube. I love you guys. I'm Willie Michael. Do good, be good, live good. Namaste.